Welcome to the Journey to a Million podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Walker. This podcast is about my personal journey from being $25,000 in debt to getting to a million dollars of net worth by the age of 43. Follow along with my journey, implement the ideas, and let's do it together. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's get started. What's up out there, guys? Welcome to the Journey to a Million podcast. Today is October 30th, 2021. Uh, It's a Saturday, so you can tell I'm in my weekend clothes here. Got the little, um, you know, active shirt on here. But yeah, so it's a great day. Um, I'm kind of glad I waited till Saturday to do this one because that helps us cover something really big that happened over the past two days. And that's Decentraland hitting an all-time high, sitting at about $2.52 per coin. Just a week ago in our, uh, you know, sports betting versus investing challenge, we had Decentraland at 79 cents. And over the course of the last week, basically the last two days, it's 3 x and that's something that you rarely see ever. Um, you know, we're seeing it a lot right now in crypto. You sometimes see it in the stock market on certain things in one day, but, you know, for a coin to go off like this, it's just beautiful to see. You know, um, with the whole Facebook news and them talking about metaverses and how that's going to be the future, that's basically what Decentraland is here. It's virtual reality metaverse where people can become an avatar and then go do things just like they would in real life, but it's all virtual. You can buy virtual real estate. You can have virtual businesses. There's going to be whole new ecosystems, whole new economies built on this. And because of this um, narrative, we've seen all the gaming coins, a lot of the gaming coins, and then Decentraland pump this week. Engine was looking good. It was pumping up to about 280 earlier today. So you know, these are coins that we've been talking about for a long time here on the channel, and it's good to see, you know, it makes you feel validated that these finally had their day, and we'll see how high they can g- keep going here. So I was very happy to see Mana at $1.32 last night, and then I woke up this morning, and it was at two twenty two, two thirty, and then it just kept going all the way to about two seventy, and then it's starting to see where it's going to go from here. Just still doing a little wedge pattern in the two fifty to two forty range. So um, hopefully we keep going. We'll see where it goes. So guys, um, now after last week and this week's performance, I think we're getting to a good spot on both of our accounts in the sports betting versus investing challenge. Uh, we were looking at about $943.28 in our investing account uh, out of 1000 that we originally invested. And as of this week, we're back in the black. So Cardano is at seven. We have 70 of those at 197. That's still holding us down a little bit. We need to we need to get a breakout for Cardano pretty soon. It's kind of lagging behind the rest of the cryptos. A little boring right now. Not a lot of big news since the hard fork, but you know, I know Cardano is working behind the scenes and eventually we'll get another pump. Eventually, it can't be all pumps all the time, you know. So we get it. Uh Cardano is at 197, so that puts us at 137.90 of value. Solana is at 194.57. Um, you know, up a little bit from last week at 188. And um, with mana, we're at 200 of those times 252. So that puts us at $504. And that's a big pump right there. XRP at 260 times 108 uh, is going to be 260 and 80 cents. And then Stormex has not had its day yet, but I do feel a day coming for Stormex as these coins continue to pump. And, you know, it just ripples effect. It has a ripple effect down the line. Storm X will have its day too, I believe. So we'll see like it pump from 0.03 to like 10 or one cent. No, not three cents to about 10 cents. Sorry, I had my decimals mixed up there. But yeah, so our Storm X value is 150 bucks. So you add all those up and we're at 1,247 and 27 cents. And so, you know, that feels good. We're up 25%. It took us eight weeks to get there, you know, and, um, We really haven't had to do much else besides throw our money in and just sit back and relax. And I mean, I will tell you the the betting, it was getting 
uh, like to a point in our, remember this is an imaginary account, luckily, but we were down 500 at one point, and now we're looking in a better spot. Let's take a look at the uh, the bets from last week to see how they did. So we had Oregon at UCLA in the Rose Bowl. We had over 59 and a half. That one barely hit 34 to 31. So we won 50 bucks there. And then we had a seven point teaser with the Bengals and Ravens. We had the Ravens to just to win the game or tie at plus half a point. And then the Rams to win by 10. We had a minus nine and a half. Neither of those won, which is what you want in a teaser. If you're going to win or lose, you want them both to either win or lose. Um, and then the Rams barely beat the Lions and the ba uh, Bengals beat the Brakes off the Ravens. So uh, both of those lost. That was minus 65. However, we did come through clutch with our Packers and Patriots teaser because both those teams had great matchups. They were both, you know, at home and they, you know, were looking like they should dominate. So we had the Packers from minus eight to minus one. They won 24 to 10. That was an easy W for them. The Packers don't really blow people out. They get the lead and just kind of like salt the game away. Uh, and, you know, they hold it down with their defense. And then for the Patriots, they just destroyed the Jets. We had them minus seven down to a pick. They just had to win the game. Um, and then they won 54 to 13. So when I saw that score, I was like, man, man, that's what I was hoping for. So I didn't want to wake up or not wake up, but check the score. I did sleep in that day because I celebrated my uh, birthday a week early because I know everyone's going to be raging on Halloween for, uh, you know, so I always try trying to do it the day before. So I slept in a little bit last weekend and I was like, when I checked the score for the Jets Patriots, I didn't want it to be like, Patriots losing 21 to seven or something crazy like that. And luckily Patriots dominated. They took care of business. Long way of saying we won 200 on that one, uh, 260 to win 200. So last week we were plus 185 after all the year we were down 295. So 295 negative plus 185 puts us at negative 110, if that makes sense. So we're still down 11% in that one. We need to get a win this week. Um, and we're going to take a couple picks here. So this week, I didn't like a lot of what I was seeing out there. There's a lot of games that kind of just made me feel iffy. And I don't like to take those, especially right now when we're trying to be conservative with our picks. As you can tell, we don't have any college because it's already Saturday. Um, I'm trying to stay away from that this week. So we have the Bengals minus 10 and a half at the Jets. We're going to take a seven point teaser, bring them down to minus three and a half. I'm kind of leery of this game in a way because I think the Jets are going to come out swinging and try to give it everything they got, but the Bengals should take care of business. The fact that it's at the Jets kind of, and the Bengals just had a big emotional win at the Ravens kind of makes me think that this game could be like a field goal game for some reason. Like if the Bengals won by three and then just didn't play their best, I wouldn't be surprised. And then the Rams, you know, they are minus 16 and a half at the Texans. I'm going to take them um, or in minus fifth. No, sorry. Wrong thing. All right. Looking at last week. All right. So the Chiefs are minus 10 at home against the Giants and the Chiefs have not looked good lately. Uh, stock is like very down on the Chiefs. If there was a stock to buy, I would be buying low right now if I was uh, trying to buy stock in the Chiefs because they have a way better track record of how they've been playing right now. But I do think they have some issues on that team. Um, just with the defense and then Patrick Mahomes, I think he's going to come ready this week. You know, the Giants, the only reason I'm taking the Chiefs in this one is because I think the Giants aren't going to be able to hang with them on offense. And you saw what Matthew Stafford did to the Giants. Um, I think the Giants have been frisky. There's no doubt about that. They looked pretty good for like a quarter against the Rams, but then the Rams just took over. So I do think both these teams should take care of business. We're going to get the Chiefs down from minus 10 to minus three. So both teams just need to win by four in games that they're the better team in. So we're going to do a seven-point teaser, 65 to win 50 there. All right, and then the next one, we're going to go a little bit bigger on this one. I don't know. Hopefully this won't be um, a bad call, but I'm sticking with it. So the Rams are minus 15 and a half at the Texans. And that we're going to make them minus eight and a half with a seven point teaser. I don't see how there's any way that the Texans can keep up in this game. You know, there's just. It's it should be a destruction, you know, but you never know how the Rams are going to play. So but I'm I'm, I'm definitely thinking like this would be um, this should happen. Like the Rams should take care of business 20 to 30 point win. If the Texans score 10 points, that'd be great.
you know, surprising for them. So anyway, um, Cowboys plus three at the Vikings. Um, the only thing that's an issue in this game is that Dak is a game time decision. Uh, he had that calf injury. However, the Vikings don't really blow teams out that much. You know, they're not a team that really blow, blows the doors off of other teams. And, um, you know, so like, for instance, they barely beat the Panthers. They were dominating that game, but they let them come back. Um, they beat the Lions by two points at home. Uh, they lost to the Browns by seven at home. Uh, they beat the Seahawks at home by 13. The Seahawks are not that great this year. I'll admit that. I love the Seahawks, but, you know, they're having a tough year, talent deficient. Um, and they just need to get some players. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot with the Seahawks. That's a whole other conversation. So I think they need to they need to work on their defense. But um, when Russell Wilson gets back, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I think even if Dak somehow didn't play, I still think the game would be within 10 points. Like, I'm going to stick with that. And I think if Dak does play, this game is going to be very close. Um, the Vikings have – I'm getting a vibe like they have have beat the Cowboys in the past in Minnesota, but maybe I'm thinking of the Saints anyway. I'm just rambling a lot today, apparently. Uh, this could have been a lot shorter, so I apologize for that. Hopefully, you like listening to me talk on these. But, yeah, so, all right, Rams minus eight and a half. They need to win by nine against the Texans. That should happen. And then we need the Cowboys to stay within 10 points, like lose by nine or less against the Vikings at home or at the Vikings. I think they'll, I think they'll be there. Um, I think the Cowboys can make some plays on defense. Um and I think they'll keep it close. So even though if, if even if Dak doesn't play, I still am feeling decently confident about that. And I, word on the street is it's like some gamesmanship by Mike McCarthy. Dak is going to play, but they're just trying to like make it a question mark right now. So we'll see. Either way, if Dak plays, you get the Cowboys plus 10. I like that a lot. I think they'll take care of business. Um, they'll probably win the game. I, I think they will. So we'll see. Um, all right, that's it for this week. Uh, celebrating Mana Decentraland going up to an all time high right now. Let's see where we're at 259. 259. Man, feels good. That's what that's what we've been waiting for is a moment like this for this bull run where you have a coin that three X's in two days. Man. Gotta love crypto. All right. So thank the Lord for his blessings. You know, that's um it's it's a beautiful thing to see this, and it gives you a lot of uh excitement for what's to come. You know, it's about to be November. Just a final like word on a sign-off. I got two days left here, this day and tomorrow to be 34 years old. I started this channel when I was, I think, 33. Yeah. 32 maybe right before I was turning 34 I can't remember um and the goal is to yeah I think it was 33 and then the goal is to hit I mean right before I turned 34 or something like that and the goal is to hit um my a million dollars of net worth by the time I turn 43 and the whole point of this is to like you know have the journey so everyone can follow along implement the ideas and then we're all trying to get there together so just think like it's been basically a year of doing this and um going from last year to here to see the progress that we've made you know we haven't really talked about crypto a lot we've just i mean it's it was quite kind of quiet so i decided to see this because or do this little challenge because i wanted to see what would happen if i put my money versus betting you know all that's what I was trying to do for so long was make money with trying to bet and it would never work. You know, I had maybe one good year out of like 10 and the whole time I could have been investing and you're going to get at least the same or like growth from your investing. Like your, your, your odds of winning are a million times greater, it seems like. And it's just so much more fun to see yourself be successful in that regard um, than to try to do it the other way with trying to do 50, 50 picks and the house always wins. So you know, um, we're going to that point, you know, and I'll be 35 um, on November 1st here. So it's going to be exciting. Um, it's a new chapter. I like 34 as a number. I just prefer that number, you know, um, but, but it's one of those things. So, um, you know, you can't stop time. Uh, time marches on, but 
the other side of that coin is that you'll never be younger than you are today at this very moment. So appreciate what you have. It's all relative. You know, it, next year, if whenever I turn 36, I'll be like, man, 35 was nice. So, you know, it's all relative. And, you know, if there's people that are in their 70s or 80s who would love to go back. So time is your most valuable resource. And I hope whoever's watching this out there uh, just appreciates the time that you have in the moment that you have. And just think about like small little things that you can do on a daily basis to change your life, because this isn't just one thing that we're going to do. And then we wait 10 years and it's just going to, you know, happen for us. We're doing small things on a consistent basis. We've set ourselves up for success. And now we're, we're seeing the benefits in this bull run when we have coins like mana, Decentraland, 3Xing in two days. So these are small changes that we're implementing and, and then the gains just come like when they come, we can't force it. We just have to wait. And so we have to appreciate those moments, but then whenever the next bear market comes, that's where we're going to start again. And we're going to start chipping away. And somebody that is sitting on the sidelines right now could, could jump in and the bear market and nothing's going to happen for two years and it's boring and that's how it is. But you wait two years and then you see astronomical gains. So the more you can do when it's boring and nobody's watching, the more set up for success you're going to be down the road. So that's all for today. I appreciate you listening to my diatribe here. That's what it's all about. I'm trying to do this to help myself and help others in the process and hopefully provide some value in the process. And anyone else who's like me or was like me or trying to figure out how they can invest and make money and enjoy themselves, you know, that's what this channel is all about. So I appreciate you being here. Y'all have a good rest of the day. I'll probably talk to y'all when I'm 35. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. I'll see you later.